Providence Presbyterian Church proudly presents the second annual Providence Presbyterian Church Christmas Special, featuring appearances by Joe Patton, Beth Parker, Steve Quick, Susanna Quick, Pastor Bill, Tom Jasper, Greg Vivinti, Jason Van Landingham, Daniel Kim, Joseph Kim, Isaac Kim, Brooke Wrigley, Keith Cross, and now your host for this magical Christmas event, Will Ward. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second annual Providence Presbyterian Church Christmas Special. I know, I can't believe they let us do a second one either. But we, we're here tonight to give you a sneak peek of what is coming to Providence Presbyterian Church this Christmas and into the new year. So we're going to start off with... Who, who could that be? Ho, 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 ho! Merry Christmas, Providence! Oh my gosh, everyone, it's Santa! Well, we're so glad to have you here. What brings you to Providence during this busy time of the year? Well, Will, I'd like to talk to you about how giving gifts is more important than the manner and the effort behind the gift than the physical gift itself. Well, that's very good, Santa. And how would that be? I mean, I love receiving gifts. Well, I think most people do, but I was talking with my friend Ed Gwen. And he said, Santa, doesn't it disturb you that you distribute these gifts all around the world and they're likely to get lost in the stack of all the treats and the presents and the things that take place? I completely understand that sentiment, Santa. So what did you tell him when he asked you that question? Well, I said that there, yes, it does disturb me a bit because so many people say, Johnny, did you tell Santa what you want for Christmas? And we forget that Christmas is here to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. And we also forget that a lot of the gifts are done bought from the heart and that people like pictures that their children have made and things like that that can be more important than anything you'd buy at a store. I absolutely agree with that, Santa. Now. I was told by one of my producers to ask you about the story of how you got started because he was telling me it's a great example of giving gifts and why the thought behind the gift can be more important. Well, Will, that's very true because my tradition started many, many years ago with a pastor in a small village in where is now Turkey. And this pastor, Nicholas, was one day going through the village and he came across this young woman who was crying her heart out and she was pleading with her father to give money to her boyfriend's family so that they could get married. And unfortunately, her parents didn't have enough money to buy this dowry because it was tradition in those days that the bride's family should give money or gifts to the groom's family in order for the wedding to take place, and they couldn't afford it. And so Pastor Nicholas, who fortunately had inherited some money, that evening put some gold coins in a little leather bag, and he went to the girl's house and very quietly put them on the doorstep of the house with a note that said, this is for Maria's wedding. And you could imagine how joyful and thankful the family was the next morning when they saw that gift on the doorstep, and now she could get married. And the pastor, Nicholas, was known in the future for doing many similar things. And so he was made a saint, and Saint Nicholas evolved into Santa Claus, which is the role that I play. Santa, that is truly an amazing story, and I think it's important that we go into this holiday season remembering 
what we do together is more important and what gifts we give and where they come from is more important than physically receiving the gifts. Absolutely, Will. And you know that people like to have gifts that do come from the heart, as I mentioned. And just as an example, Mrs. Claus and I have more physical gifts than we could ever handle. So we make a donation to charity to help the people that have just been hurt by a hurricane or even on Hilton Head, the people that don't have enough to eat or maybe even are sleeping in a car at night. So there's plenty of opportunity to do good for other people. And remember that we're celebrating the birth of Christ. That is wonderful, Santa. And if you would like to donate, uh, you can find out where to do that at ProvidenceHHI.org. Just click on the Give button. And Santa, we thank you so much for coming out here. Please feel free to drop by the snack table to get one of the first 2022 Christmas cookies. And per Mrs. Claus's request, they are low-fat, gluten-free, and Whole30. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna, we'll be right back after this wonderful song from our very own Beth Parker. Thank you, Beth, for that wonderful musical number. It's fascinating to think how Santa's gift giving started with a single wedding gift. And on that note, we actually have a couple here whose Christmas gift giving really exemplifies true love. Yes, well, we really are Christmas people. In fact, our relationship became famous because of Christmas. Oh, really? Tell me more. Well, when we were first married, I was looking through our budget and I realized that we had only a few dollars for me to buy a gift for my husband for Christmas. And I was heartbroken because I really wanted to buy him a gold watch chain to go with his antique watch that his um, father had given him. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I was so worried it was going to be a really sad first Christmas. But then I saw this ad that a wig maker put out that he was willing to pay a ridiculous sum of money to have long locks of hair cut. Oh, I've heard of that place. Uh, did you take them up on the offer? Yes, I ran over right away before I lost my nerve and I cut off 18 inches of my hair. Wow, so your husband must have really loved the watch chain you gave him. Well, unbeknownst to me, while she was doing that, I had the brilliant idea to sell my grandfather's antique watch, to buy a couple of silver and bejeweled combs for her hair. So that's what I did. So your wife must have really loved the antique comb. Right. We both sold what was most important to us to buy a gift of love for the other. I love that story. I think it is such an expression of true love as we remember to, as we give gifts this holiday season. And while we're talking about giving gifts, 
we actually have a special message from our very own Pastor Bill at, during Pastor Bill's Gift Corner as he shows you some of his picks for holiday gifts.
Thank you, Pastor Bill, for that amazing gift lineup for this year. Friends, we never really know who's going to show up at Providence during the holiday season, do we? First, we had jolly old St. Nick to tell us the story of how he got started and the importance of gift giving. Then we had our married couple come in and talk to us about sacrificial gift giving and the true love that goes into it. But now we've even got a little royalty here. We've got three wise men who have come in from the east and have made a little pit stop here on Hilton Head. Welcome, gentlemen. Well, hey, thanks. Well, um, about six months ago, we noticed a new star in the sky. And it was shining so bright, we could see it in both the daytime and at night. We got so excited about it, we have decided to follow the star across the heavens and travel to the place where we could stand right under it. So we packed our bags and we headed west. And we moved till we were directly under the star. And we knew that the star meant something more important. And it was a message that it was telling us that something, someone very special has arrived. And so we brought with us a magnificent gifts, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As we traveled across deserts, over hills and mountains, through wading through streams and rivers, we started to hear rumors, rumors of a child king. This wasn't just a king. It was the long promised Messiah of the Jewish people. And when we did find him under that bright star, it was indeed not what we expected. A young child and mother running for their lives. And the truth is, when we saw this little boy, we were awestruck. We knew it was the Son of God. And we knelt down and gave him our gifts and our lives. Wow, what an awe-inspiring story. So in a lot of ways, you could say you guys invented the art of giving Christmas gifts. Well, actually, Will, I believe that is the gift of the baby that is the greatest gift of all. Uh, why would you say that? Um, well, I was just speaking for your next guest in the green room. I think you should hear the story from her. Well, we will do that. Thank you to the wise men for showing up. And up next, we have our very own Providence Kids Choir singing We Three Kings. Thank you, Providence Children's Choir and Ju Su, for that magical performance. So as we continue talking about gift giving, uh, I'd like to bring in our final guest, uh, a young mother named Mary. Now, Mary, the wise men were telling me that they really learned the art of gift giving because of your son, Jesus. Oh, they are too kind. But I believe what they mean is that my son, Jesus, is a gift to all of us from God himself. So you mean whereas St. Nicholas's gift was about love and the married couple's gift was about sacrifice and the wise men's gift was about worship, your gift is really a combination of all three. Yes, 
Jesus is the perfect gift of God's love for all people. One writer, John, put it this way, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Mary, for that wonderful message of God's love and the Christ child Jesus. Now, to wrap up the musical portion of this show, new Providence favorite Keith Cross is here to perform Mary Did You Know. our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy would come to make you know this child that you storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try? And when you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great. I am. I am. Thank you, Keith, for that outstanding performance. We hope you take away from this half hour of Christmas frivolity that the ultimate gift has already been given to you. So remember that in the treadmill of gift giving, the craziness of Christmas, that Jesus has already come to give you the best gift of all. Actually, to go back to that author Mary mentioned earlier, he also wrote 
that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, that Jesus was not sent into the world to condemn it, but to save it from their sins. So we hope if you have to ever sacrifice that Christmas bonus for a gift for someone really special, or maybe your tree isn't as full as it, full as it normally is this year, that you remember that Jesus has been given to you as the greatest gift of all, and that is truly God's providence. See you in 2023.